most interesting things in my collection. It's the Korg LP-10. It's, uh, old, I think it's 1980? Uh, first electric piano Korg ever made. Has a very similar color scheme to the Volca Beats, which is, which is fun. We'll probably do a more in-depth dive of it, but a thing I have been long waiting to do, and this is serving as an intro of, is cracking this thing open and cleaning it out. Now, it works, like... It works! There's a couple things that I'm gonna look to address on it, though. The e-piano switch... doesn't work unless I kinda do it... slowly, and you can hear there's some scratchy there. If I do the volume knob, there's some scratchy on the volume knob. And so basically I just want to look to crack this thing open and clean as much of it as possible. I don't know how much dust has got in there over the last 40 years. Uh, I have the contact cleaner for the, the pots and stuff, and like, yeah, really I'm just hoping to kind of get it back to as restored a state as possible. I mean, I might just play this for a little while, but uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stop the video there. So, preparing to crack this thing open, it has a warning to not do that but at least it's approved by the local authorities. So I'm just up here. I'm going to let this video roll and uh, we'll see how this repair goes. Underneath the key bed, there is a little card with Japanese writing on it. I'm guessing this is a maker's mark of the person who assembled this electric piano. So peeling back this cover, I get my first look at all the different guts of this thing. It is something made entirely out of electronic components. It is analog in that sense. It also draws power directly from a wall outlet, so I gotta be careful to avoid touching anything in this zone. All the keys have a little letter stamped on them. I really like that.
I flipped this top panel back onto the key bed so that I could unscrew it to get access to the board where all the different potentiometers and switches are located so that I could clean those out. You're going to see me occasionally pull out my pair of pliers. Uh, lots of the screws on this panel were rusted. One of my biggest regrets in this cleaning is that doing this pliering process, I scratched some of the paint on this panel. I mean, oh well, it's 40 years old. It's going to have some wear and tear, wear and tear on it eventually. reassembly time. Um, I've done my best to clean every part out. I've got the pots all clean, those little felt pads there. This one doesn't detach, so say the V. All right, time for the final step, putting the caps back on and <laughs> firing this bad boy up.
downstairs in the studio, in the music zone as it were. Pretty, pretty friggin' happy with how today's cleaning went. So I thought I'd give a, a quick demo of this electric piano. So, tuning knob, we're gonna keep it dead in center. Transpose, that's kind of cool. Usually I just keep it at the lower C to kind of allow for some more bass sound. Decay relates to various features you toggle on. Let's just do in our cleanest mode possible. Uh, so the sustain mode uh, at the top sustains while you hold, let go. Uh, middle. has a decaying sustain while you hold. I also have a foot pedal plugged in, which in theory, when pressed, sustains the note. In practice, it's, it's the pedal I have is the inverse of what this keyboard wants. And then there's just a fully every note sustain modes for as long as you The tone select, they can be used individually, piano. E-piano. Clavinet. And you can use them in combination. Uh, the chorus, pretty solid. on here which is like the most sort of mind-boggling part of this just using it to pick out the sort of range of harmonics you want the sounds to have so if I go back to piano I mean I kind of want that to sound brighter so I'm gonna That's cool, right? You can do some stuff where you just focus on the bass and this thing gets kind of weird down low. What if we try some fast chorus? Mm, yeah, you know, there's, there's different sounds to be. Like it's bassy, no doubt, right? And yeah, that's basically the uh, Korg LP-10. The other thing about this is it's supposedly full 64 key polyphonic, just based on the way the circuits work. Last interesting thing I want to have in this video is that it's analog-ish. Every, as you saw when we busted it open, every component is just there on a circuit board, but it uses logic-based components. It's how it, it, they call it divide down synthesis. It is kind of semi-digital, semi-analog. It's a really weird, unique thing, and uh, I've certainly love it as a piece of my collection. I got it at a very affordable rate, so I'm curious now if now, especially that I've really uh, invested into the cleaning of it, will I be more compelled to keep it or will I upsell it and, uh, yeah, put money into, put that money into more gear in the future?
Hard to say. Hard to say. Hey, so yeah, I'm very happy right now with how this all went. This is an old piece of kit. I was nervous to open it up and certainly wasn't something I saw anyone else doing online. You know, this was just a cleaning, but you never, you never know when you open one of these things, right? You never know. So yeah, if you're also an LP10 owner and have thought, oh, I gotta pop that open and clean those pots out, uh, I'm still pretty amateurish at this whole music equipment repair thing, and I was able to do it no problem. So I definitely hope this encourages you to do as much. If you are just along for the ride of this video, well, thanks for coming with me on this adventure. If you like this video, give me that thumbs up. If you have any info I missed on the uh, Korg LP10 here, why don't you let me know in a comment. If you want to see more adventures with old musical equipment, well, hit that subscribe button. This is the kind of uh, thing I'm invested with in this hobby. So, uh, yeah. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.